What's up folks, welcome back to another video. This is an entire series where we building a Merge Stack application from scratch. If this is your first time on this channel, this is where we help you become a full stack developer. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and we'll be right with you after the pause. Now, if you haven't watched the last video, definitely check it out. We talk about course and we show you how we can deal with, with course policy when we're building a Merge Stack application. We also discuss actions to make our HTTP requests and so on. So definitely check the last video out. So in the last video, where we left up was, if we make a request, which we see something in our console that shows that our data has been sent to the server. However, when we look at the server console, that body request, the data that are coming in, they're coming in as undefined. So why is this, right? Well, uh, if we take a look at this route, which is which is the route that this request is being made, and this is the console that is going to log this into this here. So what's happening here, this request that body. So that body is undefined, which means there isn't any value within that body. But how can we get those value to the request that body? So whenever we do request that body, we can access those data. Well, in order for us to do this, I'm going to head over back to the server that JS. Well, what I'm going to do is right after wherever I have that Mongoose connection here, I'm going to go here and add something here like app that use and I'm going to do express.json. So we're going to use express.json and also express that you all encoded and then we're going to set that value the extended value we're going to set this one to false now you might be like okay sterling what the heck are those right so think about this as a middleware that is being hooked into express and this one is gonna parse every single json that are coming in or every single URL encoded. And what that mean is this extended false means that how deep do you want to go inside that object? Now, if we set it to true, which means we want to go all the way really, really deep. Now, one thing I would recommend is I would recommend to only do that whenever you got a very deep nested object. But for this, I don't have a very nested object. All I have is a very, is a very simple object. So I'm going to set the extended to false. But what this really is doing is this is making all the requests that are coming in as JSON or as the URL encoded and make them available on the request that body. So whenever we do request that body, we'll be able to see those data that we're looking for. All right, so let's take a look. So here's the data. I'm going to click this again. Check this out. When I go over the network tab and go over the header, so the data that I'm going in, they're going in like this, like a JSON, right? Remember what we added earlier is going to take any single JSON and make them available on the request that body, which means when we console log that request, we should see those data right now. And indeed, if we take a look at our console, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, we are now seeing those value into our console, which is fantastic. Now, if this doesn't make sense for you right now, don't worry. What that means is every single data that are coming in as a JSON or you all encoded, it's all going to make them available on that object. You can just do request that body and you'll be able to consume that data and you can use it however you want to. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to try to see if we can take those data, which we know, of course, are coming from the request that body and see if we can save it into our database. So let's let's do it. All right. If you guys remember from the mongoose part of things, wherever we had that model. And again, this is our model. Wherever we got that black dot post, this is how it looks like. So inside our API, we're going to bring that model, which is this one right here. And we're going to go on there wherever we want to save that to our database, which is over here. This is our model and this is the data that are coming in. So I'm going to store this one into something called data that's going to contain the request that body. And what I'm going to do in this is I'm going to make a new black post because that's what I want. I'm going to use a model method called that save. And what in order for me to use this, I have to create a new instance of the model. If you remember, this is the model. So I'm going to make a new instance of that. So I'm going to go here and make that new instance. And inside that new instance, this is where I pass those data. So I'm going to pass that data into here. So once I have this in order to start using that save, so all I need to do now is that save, which is going to take a callback. And in case there is an error, you're going to check and see if there is any error, then do this 
else do something else if there is no error which is the s i'm going to copy this one and move it inside the else so if there is no error we're going to let the user know that your data has been saved something like that if there is an error we're going to send something very different you know send something like uh sorry internal server errors and then i'm gonna send 500 at the status code take a look right here right so i do add a status code right here in order to send a different error however this one by default do have the status code of 200 because it's sending 200 by default we don't need to include that in here however if you want to send something a different error code then you definitely need to use rest that status and send your different error codes so that should technically work as expected so when we send a new data it should go ahead and save that new data into our database so let's take a look and see if that worked first let's check our console everything looks fine and i'm going to go back to my react application i'm going to reload it make sure everything works fine so i'm going to go here and add a very simple thing like first post this is great and then and then click submit so data has been sent to our database so if we take a look seems everything fine but if we take a look at our database now i'm going to open robot 3t to see the data if this been if they're being saved i'm going to click on development i'm going to look for my database if you remember my database name was mern youtube which is in this block right here it's called mern youtube so i'm going to go here and click on mern youtube click on collection and click on black post and if i click the second one and there you go this is being saved and if we try a last one such as this is awesome second post and click submit and then go back to our database again then play that button we have a third one and then this is awesome so everything is working end to end which is fantastic all right so before we go to the next step there's a couple things that i want to do just a couple we factor number one i'm going to go back inside the cloud folder wherever i have the app.js folder and i'm going to do a couple of things the first thing i want to do is i'm going to refactor this a little bit just kind of like remove a couple of things number one is i'm going to destructure this using the target so the event is coming in i'm going to get the target from the event and now from the target we can get what we needed so i'm going to do target i'm going to get the name and i'm going to get the value that are coming in and all of these now can be done and we have something uh, that looks a little bit like that very small that's not super crazy just two lines of code now we have something like this that is working so that should be working as expected second wherever we have our server the route api that js within this function i'm going to do a very simple refactor right here so i'm going to go whenever this happen i'm going to just return which means this lines of code will going to go ahead and stop executing and i'm going to move this function and i no longer need that else statement i can just add that line in there again that's not a super big deal i'm going to return this right there again but just in case that you see yourself doing a lot of if l if l statement and the last thing that i want to do check this out right so if i go here and submit a different post it does submit that to my server however those form are still being there so what i want to do is whenever i click this button and my data has successfully been saved to my database then i want to go ahead and we set those input for the user to be ready to add new ones so how can we do that well if we head over the client again under the soc on the, the app.js what i'm going to do is i'm going to write a different function i'm going to go here and call this one we set user inputs and this entire thing is going to go ahead and set the state set state to be equal to empty for title to be empty and we also want the body to be empty as well so now every single time that we call this method it will go ahead and we set this user and we want to call this method after everything has successfully been sent to the database so i'm going to go here and call this function right here and ladies and gentlemen that should work as expected so let's take a look and see what happened so if I save that and then try to add a very simple things again and click submit, check this out, go ahead and empty them out, which is fantastic. So now that we have some data into our database, in the next video, we're going to show you guys how we can utilize that data to pull them from the React application and then display them into the page. So see you guys in the next video.